This is a Brooklyn-bound 2 express train. The next stop is Fulton Street. Stand clear of the closing doors, please. 没错，这些都是你在纽约地铁上能看到的景象。纽约呢，作为世界上最大的城市之一，有着非常复杂和繁忙的地铁系统。自从1904年通车之后，除了疫情期间，纽约地铁几乎从不停歇，一天运行24小时，一周七天。但比起世界上别的大城市来说，纽约的地铁更是以脏乱差而著称。尤其是今年夏天飓风期间，更是让问题无处遁形。但是纽约人呢，对地铁还是有独特的感情在的，所以大家为什么对纽约的地铁又爱又恨呢？纽约一共有五个行政区，而他们每一个的建成其实都和地铁有很大的关联。For most of the history of the city of New York, all the way up until the mid to late 1800s, when you when you say New York City, you are really talking about the island of Manhattan below 34th Street. This is very crowded. Everyone was moving around by horse, if you can believe it. Nobody could get anywhere, and so there was a bunch of things that happened in quick succession that really kind of said we need to think differently about how we're going to move people around the city. And the New York City subway system opened in October of 1904, and so it was a huge success from the very first day that it opened. The city planners realized that you could do two things: one, you could get folks around more quickly, but two, you could actually create different parts of the city. By leveraging the subway, Queens is Queens because of the subway. It just is. You experience Bronx, the Bronx, because of the subway, and certainly the subway had a huge impact on、uh, Brooklyn and the island of Manhattan as well. Something that a lot of folks don't know about the New York City subway system is it's actually a combination of three separate companies that all came together to form what you know today as the New York City subway system. IRT is the very first subway company. Those are all your numbers: one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So when you get on a train in New York City, that's a number train. Their DNA, where they come from, is the IRT. When you get on a train, that's an A, an E, a C, an N, an R, a W. Those have DNA of two other companies. This train, which was built in 1949, was considered a prototyping train. If this looks vaguely familiar to you. It's because this train was very prominently featured in the Steven Spielberg movie *Bridge of Spies*. So when you see Tom Hanks kind of on the the subway moving around New York City, he's actually sitting in this very train car. 在电影和动画片里也有很多纽约地铁的呈现。随着时间的推移，搭乘地铁的人数越来越多，但是维修的经费并没有增加，而且整点率越来越差。这和党派的纷争有关，也有其他的原因。It's the city that never sleeps, and our subway system for many, many years was always going.、Um, it's also enormously expansive, and there's different kind of chapters of technology that need to be upgraded at different points, and so it's challenging. 一家英国的地产公司以无障碍设施、便捷程度、宠物、网络、舒适度、价格、新旧程度和载客数量这八个维度来给世界各地的地铁评分。我们可以看到，北京是世界上载客数量最多的地铁线路，只有上海和首尔的地铁能做到每个地铁站都有电梯，在无障碍设施上做得最好。世界上只有纽约的地铁是二十四小时运营的，以及宠物们在伦敦搭乘地铁最为方便。我今年才搬来纽约，而我每天都要搭乘这个有一百多岁的地铁线路。而我的家乡上海呢，地铁和我同岁，才二十八，所以呢，设施比较的崭新和完备。有防止掉落的电子门，总是很准时，而且也不会像这边有 A B C D E 或者一二三四五让人复杂和头痛的线路。但作为一名新的 New Yorker， 虽然和所有人一样，我总是在抱怨地铁有多么的脏乱差和不准时，可是呢，我也还是很喜欢这种野蛮生长的状态，因为在这里你可以看到各种有趣的街头音乐表演，可以看到纽约人各显神通，把自己的宠物带上地铁。因为规定必须把宠物放在某种容器或者袋子里，才能带上地铁。也可以看到许多奇形怪状、有趣的事情。但是无论如何，不管在哪里，都希望大家能够安全地搭上地铁，顺利到达自己想要去的地方。Hello， 谢谢你收看到这里。那你喜欢你所在城市的地铁吗？你去过世界上别的地方，你对那里的公共交通有什么样的感觉？欢迎在留言区里告诉我们。那如果你喜欢这个视频，也记得点赞转发。我们下次视频再见，拜拜。